Thanks for dropping into the cast party. Join the cast and crew as they're flung from their Hollywood film set into the crazy world of Dungeons and Dragons. And action! Welcome to Extreme Makeover Grove Edition. I'm your host, Rye Pennington, and today I'm joined by our special guests, Narina, Barumo, Jody, and Ronan. Everybody, today, it looks like we're going to be helping out the cast and crew. Now, they've come upon some tough times. I mean, it doesn't even look like they're in the same realm as they used to be, and could really use a show like us to lift their spirits in this new and unusual place. Do you think we've got what it takes, guys? It's going to be a difficult task. They said it themselves that they have zero experience, but I think we can pull it off. There is at least one elf in the group, so she may be easy to work with, though I hope not for long. I can't bear to look at that bright teal for more than an hour or two. Ah, yes, it will be a task worth doing. If only I can find a single beneficial aspect to the man with the machine. He doesn't seem to have any from first glance. It will be my hardest challenge yet. Gladly, but I listened to that guy's EP and... Oh, I've got some work to do. Ha, don't worry. I won't put any stairs in their way. It seems like that is their biggest enemy. Well, at least for the big guy. We've only got 24 hours. Let's hope we can make it happen. All right, everybody. Let's do it! Save that tree! Save that tree! Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cast Party. My name is Colin McManus, and I will be your director for today. I am joined by my lovely cast and crew, Ryan McManus. Hi, Sebastian Vivaldi Greensleeves, an emo-at-heart musician struggling to find his way in L.A. Anna Brisbane. Hi, I'm playing Blueberry Sky, the environmentalist vegan actress trying to save the world through art. Nigel Deacon. What's up? I'm Xander Gucci Supreme, an alien researcher that just loves shoes so, so much. <laughs> <laughs> and Vince Perito. I play Jet the Boulder Chambers, the big burly heartthrob whose love resides with his lovely mother and beautiful princess pebbles. All right, everybody. Uh, we all decided to change our intros and it messed me up, but let's <laughs> jump right in <laughs> and do a recap of what happened last time. We began with Xander during his watch, who had a heartfelt talk with the moons, hoping to hear something in return but you were greeted only by the whipping of the wind. You stirred Blueberry from her trance to show her the moons, and then took a beautiful picture of her silhouette backlit by these moons. Before Blueberry, you resumed your trance. Xander also woke up Sebastian and Jet to get an absolutely so amazing, near-perfect so picture bitter. of Jet. That would have gone instantly viral if it had been put out to the world and then accidentally deleting it before getting to show Sebastian or Jet its glory. Blueberry, feeling rested after her trance, decided to look for the little squeaking she had heard the night before. She found hints of a rodent of sorts in a nearby desk and was able to coax it out with a few crumbs of bread and little squeaks of her own. The long blue and white striped ferret joined her and slept in her arms for her watch and was given the name Frederick. As dawn was approaching, however, Sebastian started screaming from inside the teepee. The three of you failed to wake him as Sebastian was deep in a dream state. Sebastian, you dreamt of walking through a forest hearing a beautiful piano in the distance, coming up to a ridge where you could see a small trading village, and finally fixated on an old mansion that sits along a ridge overlooking the village. The clock tower changed to a rune that burned into your mind to where that was all you could see. Then your alarm began playing and awoke from your night terror. The rest of you got to speak to Sebastian a bit about his terrors and how they haven't occurred for some time, but his alarm always seems to bring him out of them. 
The rest of you got to meet Frederick before hearing a horn in the distance, and Frederick inadvertently pointed you southward. You followed the path south, where you were able to start seeing the trees full of leaves, as well as bushes and other flora living in the grove. And at the crest of a hill, you looked outward in awe toward the largest tree you had ever seen, with these bright pink magenta leaves, surrounded by crimson maples all around. Xander took three different pictures of the tree, and he was greeted again by the word Nemora. Along the way to the main village, you saw a few things. An area that had been completely burned down in a large rectangular shape with trenches dug all around it. A graveyard where an elderly elf was projecting the visage of a unicorn on its hind legs. And a bunch more of these copper-skinned elves. Most notably, you saw this tree you had seen before much closer, and it had an entrance to it. You entered the tree and met Narina, who called a meeting of the council. The council asked why you needed Yasora, and Blueberry told them that Yasora might be able to help find your friend. You assured them you were not with the magistrate, and it was the magistrate who had taken your friend from you in the first place. Narina informed you that Yasora was not currently in the grove, and that she was on a journey. And she was supposed to return days ago, but is currently not here. You all offered your assistance in going to help Yasora, and Narina expressed that this may be their only chance to assist her and save the grove. She then asked what some of your strengths are. Jet answered his persistence. Xander answered his eye for reading others and Sebastian answered his ability to provide whimsy and happiness for his friends. Narina grabbed Blueberry and took her out into the grove, to a clearing. She told you to focus on everything around you. She asked what you think the most important way to save nature is. She expressed that sometimes, to save nature, you need to rid what ails it. And in many cases, you need to become nature. She turned into a wolf before your very eyes as Blueberry got on all fours and did the same, turning into a bright white dire wolf, and Frederick climbed aboard for a ride. Sebastian was taken to the market by Jody, who played a few notes along the way. You played her a little bit of Get Stoked, and she was unimpressed by the selfishness of the song and proposed you try to bring something more to your friends when they are in need. She opened up a box and presented you with a few instruments. Sebastian, you grabbed a lyre and gave it a shot, playing something more relaxing, a song of rest. Xander was taken to the fields to find his strengths. Barumo had a few ideas and you failed at shooting a target, swinging with a sword, picking an edible berry, and initially at reading an Italian scroll. However, when you brought out your camera, Xander, you could see the Italian Elvish in common. Once you dropped your camera, you could see the Elvish still, and felt like you could see further into the distance. Finally, Jet, you were taken to the fields and got a few swings off at a target dummy before Ronan brought you into a Morpha and tested your persistence, making you climb hundreds of feet up the tree to a balcony and then back down, before proclaiming, Again, you did it once more and were brought back into the field before cracking on the dummy once more. Ronan proclaimed once again that you were just whacking at it. He asked what you were thinking about when you swung the hammer. After hearing your answer of how tired you were, he grabbed your jaw and told you that you needed a cause to be fighting for. Jet, you proclaimed you fight for the ones you love. You fight for your mom. You made one last swing at the dummy, with the love for your mom filling up inside you as you smited the dummy into the ground with a crack of holy energy. Ronan simply said, Now that's something worth fighting for. Now, you have all finished your training, and your individual trainer says it is time to reconvene with the others inside Amorpha to discuss what is to happen next. Blueberry, still a wolf with Narina in the forest, Sebastian with Jody as she plays some tunes for the market goers. Xander, Baramo has brought you tons of scrolls and keeps putting them out and telling you to read. And Jet with Ronan, who is picking up the training dummy and trying to restake it into the ground. So, the question is, what will you do next? 
Is there anything you guys want to do specifically with your council member before reconvening in Amorpha with the others? Um, I don't think so for mine. I don't know if anyone else has anything. I think Xander's probably sick of reading. He's not a book guy. I just want to howl. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Narina has collected a sample of this fungus in a jar so that she can bring it back with her. And she starts heading back towards Amorpha. As you're following, are you following as a wolf still? Yes. Okay. I am still wolf. So you're moving much more nimbly through the forest now. Sebastian, Jody finishes up her last song. A few of the market goers bow to her and she begins packing her stuff up, closing her little box of instruments and as well guiding you towards Amorpha. Barumo is grabbing a bunch of these scrolls to take with you as he's going towards Amorpha. Come on, come on. We must go. All right, bro. Thanks. I appreciate it. And Jet, you are already right over by Amorpha, and Ronan brings you inside. As you are all taken by your council member to the inside of Amorpha, Narina comes in with a wolf. Dire wolf. Big. Big dire wolf with Frederick riding this dire wolf. Jesus Christ! I'm going to growl at them. <laughs> I'm hiding behind Jet. <laughs> uh, hi, puppy? Yes, this is your friend. What? No, god damn it. (laughs) What do you mean our friend? (laughs) I'm going to growl at them. Like, yeah, we we see Frederick, but uh, where's Blueberry? Who looks the most scared? 100% Sebastian. (laughs) Seeing as he's behind me. Oh, me. Absolutely. (laughs) Powering. (laughs) Blueberry, give me intimidation, though. I'm I'm curious how much. Oh, it's... It's only six. <laughs> Ooh, I feel like you'd be kind of like half smiling, giggling through this, so you're not quite getting this much growl. I'm going to run forward, growling, and leap and jump at uh, Sebastian and uh, try to knock him over what? and just look his face. Oh my God. Okay, okay. Okay, well, okay. here's the thing. Is this ferocious, like, first before I'm actually on the floor? Yes. Okay, let me know and I'll start screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Blueberry, you're, you're basically trying to grapple him, so why don't you give me a strength check with your dire wolf stats? Oh, God. Does she have to do it with, like, disadvantage or whatever? Because I'm in front of Sebastian right now? It depends if you're trying to block this wolf. <laughs> Do we even have any inkling that she is, like, that that this big dire wolf is our friend? I mean, Narina said this is your friend. (laughs) Is that, like, insight? How would you, how would you know? Yeah, probably insight. Either an insight or Nate. I I don't know if that would even be. It's up to you whether you interpreted that as me or Frederick. (laughs) Okay, so, oh, wait. Yeah, Frederick's on her back. Yeah. That's right. Frederick is also growling a little bit <laughs> with his claws up. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to let it happen then. Okay, okay. I rolled a 22. Oh my what? god, Sebastian, <laughs> give me a strength check. Yeah. <laughs> uh, seven. Wow. <laughs> Blueberry, you're able to pin the crap out of him. And what are you doing? No! Jet, what are you doing? He's licking you his fight? face like a puppy. Uh, oh, oh, god, oh. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi. Okay. Oh, hi, friend. Oh, okay. I thought this thing was going to eat me, and I don't know why Jet moved, but oh, hi. <laughs> uh, seeing the display, I'm going to go over and scratch between her ears. Yeah, I'm doing chin scratches right now. <laughs> Wagging tail. <laughs> Frederick is still playing up the little growly, so he's growling at you guys as you get closer. <laughs> <laughs> Narina kind of gathers you all around the central benches. Calm down, everyone. I'm glad you're enjoying yourselves. I'm also very glad that I can see your strengths have come to fruition. And you can see Ronan is in the center of this circle of benches, and he is currently lighting a fire in the center. There's a fire pit built here out of stone, essentially to help the wood from not burning. She, along with Barumo, They bring some leftover gear that they have, and she says, we thought this might be useful to you, and we kind of tailored it towards each one of you. They each hand you a bag. (gasps) Hmm. Uh, I take the bag. Really? (laughs) I mean, 
I'm, I'm always down for free drip, you know? True, yeah. true. Xander, as you open the bag, this is typical adventuring gear. In fact, this is exactly that. Whatever you get at the start of your class where you get to pick a pack of some sort, it is just all of that stuff. Because, like, you came here without anything, so they kind of gave <laughs> you rope, and you have all that stuff that you picked at the start. Sweet. I'm going to use this opportunity to transfer the 6,000 batteries to my new bag. Oh, good call. Okay. Good call. <laughs> the, the, new one, the new one's big enough to fit all the 6,000, right? <laughs> yes, the new bag is big. I'll, I'll join in and help. Yeah. All right, good. It'll, it'll take you a little bit of time, but you're able to just kind of, like, <laughs> pour it in. Am I able to dig through my bag as a wolf? Um, yeah, you, it would take you a second. Like, it wouldn't be easy. You'd have to nuzzle. I'll hold it open for her. I have a question that's more um, logistical about the metamorphosis. Is, do, are the clothes included, or is this something that we're going to have to work on and just kind of, like, <laughs> what happens there? You don't know yet. Cool. <laughs> this is actually great, because Nigel Surprise. himself doesn't even know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not just Sander, but yeah. Blueberry is sniffing around her bag as Sebastian holds it. Jody comes over with a handful of clothing. You guys don't really look like you're from around here. I didn't know if you guys were like interested in this. We had some extras. So if you want, and she like specifically looks at Sebastian and Xander, you know, just in case. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jody. Yeah, um, yeah, of course. I don't really know if I want to leave my leather jacket behind, but I mean, maybe I'll maybe I'll give it a shot. Xander's always telling me to try new things anyway. Yeah, you gotta you gotta try out some new threads, bro. It's it's it can be helpful. I don't know about this stuff. I wouldn't recommend <laughs> it. Uh, so like, keep the jacket. Def keep the jacket, bro. It All looks right. good on you. <laughs> you got the right fit. Jody just kind of like nods and goes to sit down, and you can see that she is cleaning her little flute. Narina begins speaking to you um, as you all kind of like settle down. You get rifling through your packs and she says, would you like me to tell you of Yasora? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's why we all came here. We're hoping we can help. If she says she can help us, we want to do the same. To do that, I need to tell you a story about this. And she gestures around her to this giant tree you're in. About everything here. I'm a pop a squat on the floor, like cross-legged, and just be all interested. <laughs> okay. E- even though there's benches around? Yeah. Okay. Aww. We're sitting around a campfire. I want to chill. Yeah, nice. He's ready for story time. As you know now, this is a Morpha. She's the largest tree in the grove and has a lover similar to her in size. Ecrosia. Amorpha and Ecrosia were joined as one long ago, centuries ago. They began in the grove as the only two trees that could grow with leaves dotting their branches. All of these grand maples around you started out with no leaves and no way to reproduce and grow. No one knows exactly how the lovers got here but it is said that Sylvanus himself came down from Elysium to plant Amorpha and Ecrosia to help fuel the growth of the Crimson Grove. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't understand you. That's all right, Blueberry. It's okay. It's all good. That's a a head scratch moment. (laughs) uh, I'm just going to continue. Blueberry, if you have questions, you know how to get back, right? I, I, I've never had a student not be able to get back. I nod. <laughs> Blueberry, we're, we're kind of worried about you. Is this you permanently, girl? Is this, is this, all right, you're going to be able to show us where the well is, like Timmy fall down? <laughs> <laughs> no. What is Elysium? The plain of Elysium. And you said Sylvanus came from there. Sylvanus. He is known as the Forest Father. Oh. The king of Elysium or something? (laughs) No, no. He is the god of nature. He resides in the plain of Elysium. Okay. God of nature. So, so how did, how did Tree Daddy come down? Like, is he, (laughs) is he, uh, can he fly? Or is like, or is this like a god thing? A few mortals, yes, have the power to transfer people from one plane to another, but Sylvanus, yes, is a god, and he has that ability. 
He resides in the plain of Elysium, the beautiful, beautiful plain full of nature. A plain is like a different world, similar to this one, but different in so many ways. Each plane is a different location, and they are connected by portals from one world to another, and some individuals, such as Sylvanas, can create their own portals. He came here to plant a more funny crozier. As I was saying, they grew into the largest trees the realm has ever seen. They were together, roots entwined, and providing life for the grove. This caused the crimson leaves to grow all around the beautiful maples here. And the druids here lived in harmony with nature for so long. And then the rift happened. Sylvanas promoted the growth of the grove and wanted balance to be created between the people living here and the grove itself. The grove can be cared for as well as lived off of as long as there is a balance. This idea is our lifeblood. It's what fuels us. But it also angered the goddess Talona. You see, she was spreading an unnatural disease throughout the island to rid it of all inhabitants so she could create her own temple overtop the ashes of the grove. Sylvanas' strength and resolve forced Talona's disease away. Amorpha and Acrosia were so strong together, they were able to fight back the disease and keep the Crimson Grove alive. This angered Talona, so she turned to what she knew best, disease. She needed to separate Amorpha and Acrosia, and she could not do it alone. She traveled to Pandemonium to find Talos, the Storm Lord. She had a deal to propose. You see, Talos hated another god, the orcish god Grumsh. He is another storm deity that Talos saw as competition. Talos wanted to weaken Grumsh and kill him, so that Talos was the only one to control the weather. Talona's deal was this. Talona would spread a disease throughout Grumsh's followers to help eradicate them from Fendrea, and Talos, in return, would cause a great rift between Amorpha and Ecrosia. The rift itself followed a massive earthquake. It tore asunder the ground between the lovers, their roots unraveling from each other as the gap between them grew larger. For a fortnight after the skies did not brighten, the whole of this island, Amorpha and all, were slowly moving away from the mainland, and with it, Ecrosia. When the skies were finally visible again, Ecrosia could not be seen. In its place, a large sea was created. Most call it the Sea of Talos, a reminder of who created it. We prefer it to call it the Sea of Lovers. They say on the nicest of days, with the clearest of skies, you can climb to the top of Amorpha and still see the lovers waving to each other. Oh, that's so sweet. Talona did succeed in separating Amorpha and Ecrosia, but her disease never successfully consumed the grove. And that's because of the speaker. And our current speaker is Yasora. Oh. Oh, word. She's kind of like the Lorax. The keeper of the trees. She speaks for the trees. I, I do not know this name, but yes, she does speak to both Amorpha and Ecrosia. Oh, oh, oh. She can speak to them, not just for them. That's kind of crazy. She speaks to us about what they say. Uh, she, she somewhat speaks for them. That's le- that story is super, like, hashtag cute, you know? Like, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, Talona never did succeed in taking over the grove because of the speaker. 
And so for centuries, ever since the rift, the speaker goes to Ecrotia every year on the spring solstice on a journey. We call it the Equinox. She goes alone across the Sea of Lovers to Ecrosia. She speaks with him and brings back the one seed that Ecrosia produces each year. The speaker brings it back here to Amorpha and places it on the podium at the top of the stairs in Amorpha's heart. That seed brings enough life to fuel the Crimson Grove for another full year until the next solstice. Without it, Amorpha and the entire grove will die. Damn, I didn't know Italians lived this long. I still do not understand when you say this. Bummer. I have a response here. Um. We prefer to be known as elves or uh, the druids of the grove. But yes, we live for quite some time. Uh, Hundreds, if not thousands of years. Holy shit. So, I'm assuming Ysora went to go see Akrosia. Yes. How long does it take to get to Akrosia from here? By boat, about half a day. And you said she left quite a few days ago. Ysora left around three days ago. It normally only takes the speaker one. Alright. Well, the way I see it is if you can get us a boat, we can get us you a Ysora. I have already spoken with a trade ship that has been here for a few days for repairs. The captain has agreed to sail you to Ecrosia tomorrow as a favor for the Grove. (gasps) Sailing? Love me a rickety ship. Guys, I've always wanted to be a pirate. How long do we have? It may already be too late. So if... If Ysora went to Akrosia and didn't come back, do you think she had problems along the way? Or do you think she had problems when she got there? I do not know. I think the best idea is to follow her path. Would be across the sea and up Ecrosia. And she gestures towards, like, the staircase that's in Amorpha. The seed resides at the top in Ecrosia's heart. Jet having PTSD right now. (laughs) (laughs) God. Oh, God. (laughs) Yo, you think, do you have any maps that could point us uh, the way there? Because apparently I'm dumb good at reading now. So, like, I might be able to, like, see where it's at. Oh, the captain knows exactly where Ecrosia is. Tight. Ecrosia is right on the coast, much like Amorpha. Do you think the captain would let me drive the ship for a second? Drive? Yeah, oh, that's true. You said drive. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did say drive. I know what I said. Uh, <laughs> you, you may ask him. Jatoba is a very nice man, and he likes to help the odd ones. <laughs> I, yeah, I Sebastian don't... here, he's a pretty odd one, now let me tell you. I don't know how to take that, but I'll accept it. <laughs> Either way, in the morning, he can take you all to Ecrosia. And you can find Yusura and make sure everything's okay. Hell yeah. You get all that, Blueberry? Ow. Cool. All right. Should we, like, start teaching her tricks or something? Can you can you shake? Spin around. Hold up. All right. So what's next? Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, is there more story or are we, we, good to, we good to prepare? Yes, you may explore the grove as you wish. We have been setting up a few tents for you to sleep for the night. Can I ask you uh, one thing, Marina, before we head out? Yes. So when we were coming in, we saw some trenches and what looked like this really big burned area. And I guess I was just wondering what that was all about. Controlled burns. Why were you doing controlled burns? There are many reasons for controlled burns. They help improve the health of the forest. It recycles the nutrients in the trees and kills off invasive species and because we can control them we can control the fire and its intensity and it reduces the threat of larger fires it burns up all the flammable fuels in that area and allows the grove to regrow anew okay that's pretty smart i will show you to your tent and you may explore the grove if you wish but it is getting late 
So when is the ship supposed to leave? I'm sorry. At dawn. When the ship lands, is there going to be others that we have to worry about? No. No one lives near Acrosia anymore. Do you think Jatoba would come with us? I do not know. He has a crew of 20, 30 sailors. I, I don't believe he would leave them on the boat. True. Plus, if he's a trading ship, he's probably got other work to do. Yes, he's doing us a grand favor. He's always been a friend of the Grove. You know, we might be able to pill for some of that crew, though. <sighs> I wouldn't expect too much of it, but you may have a chance. Let me show you to your chambers where you can rest for the night. As my hour uh, runs out, I transform back into myself. Oh, God. Wearing and carrying everything that I had before. Hey, she's back. Blueberry, what? What, Aww. what did that feel like? Um, the greatest thing I've ever felt in my entire life. Oh. What happened to you? I transformed into a dire wolf. That's pretty badass. On your own? Yeah. Now, uh, logistical question, did it feel better to have a head scratch as a person or as a wolf? I mean, both are great, but it it was significantly cooler as a wolf. Okay, okay, good to know. Hey, something I've always been wondering, is that tail wag voluntary, or does it just happen? Uh, it just happens, but I guess I could fake it. Oh, (laughs) alright. Hmm, that sounds familiar. (laughs) (laughs) nice you are all talking about this as an arena takes you out of amorpha just off the path they had just set up a few temporary tents for you guys to sleep in there are two tents here each that have two bedrolls in them this is where you can stay for the night um and i will find you here at dawn does anyone want to do anything before we go to sleep Hmm. Without saying anything, Jet's going to go straight to his bedroll. Oh, okay. Well, we got one answer. Anyone else? I mean, I'm good to crash. Uh, y'all, y'all got anything to drink, though? For fun or for, for nourishment. Either way, I'm fine with that. Yes. You're, you're asking for nourishment and fun? Uh, I mean, whatever you can give to me, Mama, you know? <laughs> I can uh, bring a cask of water for you all for the night to share. And I can bring you a little of uh, a special... And she gives you a nod. And just a few minutes later, she comes back. And then, Xander, she hands you a little jar that's got a lid on it. Try this. Go slow. We call it goat's milk. He doesn't really know how to go slow with that kind of stuff, so... (laughs) Yeah, I mean, like, depending on how big this jar is, if it's like a small mason jar, he's just gonna shot that. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's like a small mason jar. It's not full. It's only got a little bit in the bottom. All right, well... You know, bottoms up. Thank you much. Appreciate you. Shot. Okay, this is probably like two or three shots worth that was in the bottom of this thing. So you're you're taking like a big glug. Give me a constitution Mm -hmm. check. I got to be good at this. Come on. I got a 10. You don't throw up immediately, but burnt your throat. (coughs) Oh, (coughs) jeez. Oh, damn. All right. That was a little stronger than I expected. (coughs) I I did say go slow. And she nods and closes the tent flap. <clears throat> All right. And with that, I'm I'm peacing out and I'm just going to lay down. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I guess I don't I don't really have anything else that I think I would do. So I'll probably find some sort of bed or anything. There are separate uh separate tents. There's two tents with two bedrolls each. Okay. Where am I going? Which one's open? It doesn't really matter unless you're uncomfortable with one person. <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, not yet. Blueberry, Blueberry, it's okay. I'll I'll take the bedroll and I'll, I'll go with the guy. It, you can have your privacy. I don't care. Uh, I'm saying this as Nigel, not uh, Sleep Xander. Sebastian does have night terrors, so do with that what you will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Sebastian, you're you're walking over to the boys' tent to try to snuggle up with yeah. Jet and Xander, who are both already passed out. I'll I'll find some room somewhere. I'm going to give them 10 minutes, and then I'm just staying up. Actually, I'll give it like an hour, since I don't sleep much anyways. And then I'm going to sneak over to their tent and transform into a giant spider. Oh, oh no. God. Oh, God. <laughs> Can we get one night of restful sleep? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Sebastian, you're probably asleep, right? After the night of being woken up to look at the moon and then having a night terror, I am absolutely exhausted. So yes, I would be passed out. All right, Blueberry, they're all asleep. Okay, great. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, is Frederick with you too? Um, no, I asked him to stay behind. <laughs> All right, Blueberry, what are you doing? Keep in mind, this is a giant spider, which is a large creature. <laughs> that um, is that is how how big? Not a, a giant spider as we would think of it in the real world, but more like uh, 10 feet or something. Yeah. 10 Tall? feet. Oh it's my 10 God. feet by 10 feet. Yeah. A spider? Jesus yeah. Christ. How big is the tent? I mean, <laughs> she's outside the tent. How is she going to get in the tent? Can I fit in? <laughs> There's no way you can fit in. <laughs> oh, God. The hairs on the legs are already giving me, like, the heebie-jeebies. If I can't fit in, I'm just going to open the flap with one of the legs and just reach in. That is the most... I'm going to have actual nightmares tonight of this. Like, actual Ryan is going to have nightmares. I'm going to reach in and, and oh, um, God. poke Sebastian on the nose. Oh. When I wake up to this. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, oh, Frederick. Frederick, go. I'm trying to sleep, man. Frederick. Frederick. Fre- Frederick? Jet! Jet! <laughs> I'm just shaking Jet vigorously <laughs> as I like screech back into the corner. Jesus, Sebastian! What? Look! What? Look! Look! Holy shit! <laughs> what? What is that? I don't know. Xander! Xander! I feel like Xander has to be drunk sleeping through this. I was gonna say. I, I mean, you just <laughs> got destroyed by that <laughs> just pass out you're probably like hearing it in your dream <laughs> i want to just stroke jet's face Sebastian! Oh, oh, he's, oh, Sebastian! <laughs> are you guys doing the scooby and shaggy thing when they see something where you're like holding oh, each absolutely. other shaking? <laughs> and i am the one in sebastian's lap <laughs> <laughs> and I will transform back into myself. Jesus. Laughing uncontrollably. Oh my god. I just want to sleep. Why? Oh. oh my god. Oh god. Okay. Sweet dreams, guys. I should have stayed in the fucking tent. Where's my pebble? <laughs> Blueberry, you would definitely get inspiration for that if you didn't already have it. So I'm just letting you know. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, I can't breathe now. I'm sweating like in real life. <laughs> I am too. But also, Sebastian is drenched. <laughs> so, so we're pretty equal right drenched now. Drenched and like shivering. <laughs> Sebastian's going to walk back over and grab Frederick. I need to cuddle buddy now and just walk back over to the tent. Excuse me. <laughs> Frederick, come back here. <laughs> Sebastian, Frederick's trying to get out of your hands. As... Oh, all right. I'll just cuddle Jet, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Frederick jumps down and joins Blueberry. Sebastian joins Jet a little closer. <laughs> Sebastian, it's a little hard for you to sleep because once Jet does finally fall back asleep from his scare, he's very loudly snoring again. Oh, yeah. Are we doing butt to butt or are we little spoon, big spoon or what? You're little spoon, Jet. Yeah, you're probably little spoon in this case. I need I need to hold something. <laughs> Adorable. And then Xander's doing, Xander's probably starfished right next to you guys. Yeah, yeah. Starfish on my back. Just So it, yeah, it's Jet, I'm in the middle spooning Jet, and then Xander just has like one leg over both of us. And then, yeah, just a hand, like, on my face, sprawled out. <laughs> well, the worst part is Jet does not know this is happening because he's passed out. <laughs> <laughs> so Sebastian just comes in and starts nuzzling him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tap Jet on the face. Jet? <laughs> Jet? Jet, I'm scared. Is, is it okay if I just... I, I'm just going to... If you have a problem with this in the middle of the night, you could just, you could just push me aside, okay? I'm going to go to sleep now. Good night. Blueberry, you're up super early. Is there anything you're going to do, or are you just going to chill as you kind of wait for Narina? Um, I'm just going to do some yoga with Frederick. Oh, yeah. You got to teach adorable. Frederick all the oh. moves. 
He's doing yeah. downward ferret. He's doing. <laughs> God. Can you name another yoga pose? I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I... Xander, you very tiredly feel something nibbling at your pants. <gasps> what <laughs> my pants <laughs> like the, the cuff around your uh, like by your shoe <clears throat> what the hell is that i swear to god if blueberry is biting at my ankles <laughs> what's there there's a goat in here that is currently just chewing on your- <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> hey billy get out of here get out <laughs> it pops out it leaves a little present on its way out uh, as it gets scared oh great as you hear the buying go away, Narina kind of taps on the tent flap. Hello? Uh, come in. Are you all ready? No, but it, we're good. Yes, I... Uh, I'll slap Sebastian. Oh, hi. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, I guess. Please awaken. I'm going to awaken your friend. Are you okay, young one? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm going to take you and your friends to the docks in just a moment, uh, if you would like to prepare. Okay. I'm prepared. I've been up for a while. Is Jet still asleep? Oh, Jet's uh, still laying like right on his back with uh, his shield over his head because it's bright out. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull out like three or four of my hairs, and I'm going to start like tickling Jet's face. As if it were hairy spider legs. Oh my god. <laughs> that's, that's some innovation right there. <laughs> Director, does it wake me or no? Um, <laughs> are you in like that groggy state where you woke up from the sun and now you're trying to go back to sleep? Yes. Then I think it, you would feel this. And I, I think it's a spider? Uh, well, I mean, if he's <laughs> awake. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if I should wake up like freaking out that there's a spider again. Could that be an insight check? Insight. Yeah, I think I think you should roll insight. Make him roll. Sure, roll insight. Oh god. All right. Oh Jesus, that's a four. Yeah, that's a spider, man. <laughs> uh, here we go. Oh shit! Not again! No! 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 no, yes, no. Oh sh- sh- shit! It's okay. It's, it's just me. I was just trying to play a little, just a joke. I sh- sh- we're gonna wake the whole fucking town. Yo, it's okay. What? Why are you guys so loud? What is going on? Sebastian. Sorry. Sebastian. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm gonna start chasing him out there, <laughs> out the tent. All right, everybody, let's take five. This episode of Cast Party is sponsored by Podcorn. Now, usually we like to do some fun, goofy little skits for our ads, but we have been personally using Podcorn and wanted to take a second to talk about it. If you run a podcast, or if you're even thinking about starting a podcast, you need to sign up for Podcorn. So Podcorn is an online marketplace connecting podcasters to amazing podcast sponsorship opportunities, such as mid-roll ads like this one, interview segments, topical discussions, giveaways, and so, so much more. It has been incredibly easy for me to pop on the site, see what sponsors are available, what they're looking for, and submit my pitch to them for Cast Party. Podcorn makes it truly simple to find sponsors that fit you and your show. And the best part? There is no middleman. Podcasters of all sizes can browse and choose opportunities that are right for them directly on the platform. You never have to give up any rights to your show, and Podcorn is there to help you every step of the way ensuring you're not only protected, but properly compensated for the work that you do for brands. You work hard to produce your podcast, just like we do. So keep your creative freedom and have full control of how and when you monetize your show. Click the link in the show notes to sign up for Podcorn and start browsing for your very own sponsorship opportunities. Thank you so, so much again to everyone at Podcorn for sponsoring this episode. And if you'd like to sponsor an episode of Cast Party, reach out to us at castpartydnd at gmail.com. Quiet on set. We're rolling in three, two, one. Action. We need to be leaving. All right. Good luck. Lead the way, lady. <laughs> Narina gives a nod and starts heading eastward. 
and you move towards the docks and you can see you're moving past Amorpha and now you're getting a better look at the cliff that Amorpha sits on and the back of Amorpha is a steep cliff going down into the sea. Guys, I'm I'm so excited to be on a boat. I've always wanted to be a pirate and I can't wait and I'm all giddy. Have you ever been on a boat, Sebastian? No. Do you think being a pirate just means being on a boat? Is that not where all pirates are? No, you ever been on the internet? I didn't mean like internet pirates, like stealing all sorts of uh, internet stuff. I want to be like an actual pirate. (laughs) You want to steal boat stuff? Honestly, I just want to be on a boat. (laughs) Okay, that's not a pirate. That sounds more like a sailor, bro. Yeah, but pirate sounds cooler. (laughs) Do you know if you'd get seasick, though? Like, how's your tummy doing? Uh, I mean, I'm good this morning. I don't... I've, I've been on a plane. I don't know if that counts. Yeah, plane ships, the same thing. Oh, okay. As you approach the docks, the main building here is shaped like the hull of a large boat that has been turned upside down. Exactly like the council chambers that you had been in earlier. Except part of this building extends out over the water. And the area over the water is open towards the sea. And this is where you can see that smaller ships are brought in for repairs. Nearby are docks that are not connected to this building and are mostly empty, except for one larger sailing ship. It has a flag that has a heart underneath an archway. You can see a few smaller fishing vessels as well, all with maple trees on their flags. Beyond those... A grand blue sea. Slow waves crash against the docks, and the boats that do remain here bob up and down with the rhythm of the water. Are we going on the love boat? Uh, I don't know you guys well enough for that. The love boat? That sounds nice. What do you mean, love boat? It's got a heart. Ah, yes, the flag of Pastau. Mm. Pastau? Pastau. The city under the arch. Like mcdonald's where is that if you'd like to know more i think jatoba would be the best person to ask okay and arena brings you up towards this larger sailing ship and a small dwarven man climbs down the ladder he is an older man with a long unkempt beard he is donning a headscarf that holds back his extremely long graying black hair He has a deep tan and much darker skin than the other dwarves you have seen previously. His eyes are a deep brown, and he has a wide nose that covers much of his face. This is Jatoba. Jatoba was created by Emma Berger on Patreon. She and I worked on his backstory together, and she provided name and description. So thanks so much for that, Emma. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. You're the best. This dwarven man says, Hello, I am excited to have you on board. We're always looking for fresh faces. Uh, hi, first off, nice to meet you. I'm Hello. Sebastian. Sebastian, charmed. And he puts out his hand. Uh, I'm going to shake his hand and then I'm going to offer him some water. You sound like you could use some water. You sound a little hoarse there. Uh, I think that's just the age. Oh, oh, okay. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to offend. A, a lot of time... Yelling on the open sea, it, it gets loud. The wind's whipping. Oh, you know, that makes sense. But hey, oh, oh, uh, you, you know, if you if you happen to need somebody who uh, could, you know, take your place as far as like yelling, just for like this trip, I would be more than happy to offer my services. No, no offense, young one, but I have the best first mate a man could ask for. Cherry, my daughter. Yo, Cherry, that's, that's dope. That's another fruit, just like blueberry here. Hey. Oh, uh, yeah. You are correct, though. Her name is actually for the cherry tree for its wood. It is uh, used to help create many boats. Hold up. This is is now Nigel. Cherries? Yeah, cherry trees don't make cherries. Okay, so I don't know. (laughs) But but it's he's he is saying that she's named cherry because of the wood from the trees, not from the fruit from the trees. I think they are on trees. (laughs) Would you like to uh, climb aboard? (gasps) Yes, please. Uh, He gives a nod and he starts climbing this little ladder. This boat is pretty dang big. It's about 
80 feet long, 25 feet wide, and you can hear a lot of movement up on the boat and underneath. Like, there's a lot of people up here. Whoa. It's everything I ever dreamed of. I'm so excited. This is like a multi-hundred thousand dollar boat. Damn, son. I know. It kind of reminds me of Jet's yacht. We don't talk about that in public. (laughs) Wait, so you have been on a boat? Me? No. I just, I saw Jet get on a yacht once and I got real jealous. Were were you guys hanging out or did he not know you were there? Uh, I think I saw it on Instagram or something. Let's not get into details right now. I just am happy to be here. You guys were climbing board? Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. I feel like, Sebastian, you're you're hype. You're probably first one up, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm admiring the deck. Yeah, as you get up here, you're seeing quite a few things. There is Jatoba. He is currently climbing another set of stairs up towards the wheel area, the stern as it was. And there's a lot, a lot of people moving around here. One that you recognize, who you almost guarantee is Cherry, is a small dwarven woman. Very dark black hair she keeps up in a messy bun. She is wearing a bright yellow bandana around her head, and she has this very wide nose. Um, And she's standing up at the stern, kind of calling out to people as they're getting ready. The other crewmates you see here are interesting. You can see lots of humans, lots of elves. There is a horned humanoid that has this deep red skin. There are more of these dragon-like humanoids that are walking around. All the different humans, elves, dwarves, you see some even smaller humanoids than dwarves. All of them are different races, they're different genders, they're different sizes. You can see that there is one man who is not quite able to walk straight up and down, and he's leaning over and using two canes to move around. And he seems to be checking inventory for some of the stuff that's on the actual deck of the boat. There's another man that you can see speaking with Cherry, and he has only one arm. And you can see he is doing some signals to the others. And there seems to be one other man looking directly at him and giving signals back that, like, isn't speaking. I am going to run over to Jatoba. Yo, uh, uh, yo, Jehovah, um... Jatoba. Uh, my bad, bro, my bad. Yes, um, it's fine. I gotta, I gotta ask you... Something real important. Um, is yes. are they are all the all your crew? Are they good? Like, are they are they homies or like is this some some weird shit? Like, I don't because the last time I saw a, like a lizard like person, we got into a bit of a scuffle. Um, he exploded a little. I don't know. I still don't know what <laughs> that was. But are we safe? Are we good? Is this good? Are we good? Do you need help? Are we good? All of the people on this boat have some troubles. Either in their past, with their bodies, with their minds. But they are all good and they all work for me so we can do the right thing for the people who deserve it. People like the druids here at the Grove. Oh, so they're like reformed. Sebastian, where the hell did you come from? Sorry, I saw you guys walking (laughs) over here and I was just curious. I'm just trying to look at the ship a little more. Okay, alright. Well, thank you, Jatoba. Thank you. It's tight. As long as it's normal for that homie to have... Uh, scales and that dude to have horns. Yes, that's that's okay. All right, cool, Gucci. It's all good. Um, I will uh, call me if you need me. You may take a seat anywhere. And he kind of gestures. There's a few benches on the deck that like some of the other men are sitting at. And you can see Cherry starts calling out to the one-handed man who is doing signals down one side, and they're letting down the ropes and the sails. Then the boat starts to get moving. It catches a nice gust of wind, and it gets onto the open sea. A lot of the crew takes a seat along the outside edges of the boat, as they're not really needed during this point. There are some open benches in this main area. Jatoba is the one manning the wheel, and Cherry is continuing to give simple orders here and there to the crew members. The wind begins picking up as you get further out onto the sea, And behind you, Amorpha begins fading into the distance. And the smell of the air is salty but fresh as the wind blows against the sails and propels the ship forward. With, like, my hair just flying all over the place, I just want to, like, start running around, just yelling commands that Sebastian has definitely seen in, like, pirate movies, just running up and down the deck, 
Hoist the anchor! Raise the sails! I uh, starboard bow! Oh my god, Sebastian! This is so embarrassing! <laughs> some of the crewmates start giving you some quizzical looks. There is one guy off to the very front. He is like standing at the bow, looking out, very excited, and he turns around. And he just starts bellowing this laugh that he just thinks it's (laughs) hilarious that you're just walking around all giddy. This guy gets it! You can see some of the other people are giving you dirty looks, but he is just absolutely floored by your reaction. With the hype that is Sebastian being on a ship finally, he's going to find probably the tallest point he can. And I would like everyone to join me. In a sea shanty. Oh, we're off to a Croatia through waters of danger. Sebastian Blueberries and Dur and Jet Chambers. Yo, ho, singing all hands on deck and will yo, ho, always break for a flex. Everybody! Yo, ho, singing all hands on deck and will yo, ho, always break for a flex. Sander, that was, like, for you flexing on people with, like, your watches and stuff. That's tight as hell, bro. Thank you, thank you. It hit him for a dab. Hey! (laughs) (laughs) And with that, that'll be a bardic inspiration for Xander, because I thought he would appreciate it the most. (laughs) Okay. So that means I get, I have a D6, D8? Uh, I think it's a D6 right now. D6, tight. (laughs) You can technically only use it for ten minutes. I don't know if we want to follow that rule, (laughs) but... Oh, word. Oh, well, I'll just, I'll do something in the next 10 minutes that requires it. <laughs> yeah. What does it inspire you to do? Uh, and I see someone with like, with a hat that I want, and I want to try and persuade them to give it to me. <laughs> there is a dragonborn man who is currently just sitting down. You can see that he has a hammer, not like a jet's hammer, but like more of like a tool hammer. He doesn't have as much of a hat as, like, a helmet on. It's like a leather helmet that goes down the back of his head. There is a halfling woman who has one of those... Is it a trifold hat? What's a trifold hat? The classic kind of, like, pirate hat. It's got the three points. There is someone with one of those, but it's not her. This girl's got a a bonnet on the thing with like the so uh, with the tassels. Like, it comes down with the tassels and it's like connected under the chin. You can see that this woman doesn't have any hair, and so it's just a bonnet. There is a human man with a fedora on, oh my God. and then there is a group of three, two dudes, one female, all wearing pirate hats and the same outfit. All right. I would like to go over to that group okay, and proposition that we play a game and that the loser has to give me the hat, but the game is just rock, paper, scissors. Would these people know what rock, paper, scissors is? No, so I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> no, rock, paper, scissors is definitely a famous game in Vendrea because that's more fun because oh. I do want to do this rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they actually invented rock, paper, scissors? Fun fact. Yes, actually they did. So the the woman steps up immediately. Okay, but but what do I get if I win? Uh, all right. Well, I'm willing to offer up anything but my camera. So what do you what do you want? You don't look like my style. Like, do you have do you have like, like at least like a coin or something? Oh yeah yeah. I got you. I got some. I got some some janglies here. How about five silver? I, yeah 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 yeah. I'll, sure. Money is no object. And I pop my collar a little bit. Okay. So. I've totally forgot to have you roll for persuasion to get this to happen, so <laughs> we're going to have you do that now. Roll for persuasion. Okay. That's a 12, and I get to roll for a, with a d6. Yeah. Yes. To add on to that. If you're using okay. your inspiration, yeah. That added a 1. <laughs> okay. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So that's enough. So we're both going to roll a d6. 1, 2 is rock. 3, 4 is paper. 5, 6 is scissors. Okay. Ready, set, roll. I got mine. I got mine as well. (gasps) Rock. Paper. (laughs) Boom. That's what we like to see. Ah, dang. Ah. She hands you the hat and then grabs one of the hats from the dude next to her. Double or nothing? (laughs) Uh, (gasps) Xander, please! Xander, please! Xander, please! Xander, please! (laughs) All right, all right, all right. 
for my boy. Yeah, let's do another. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I got mine. Paper. Scissors. Oh, 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 oh. Nice. Oh my god, I'm like shrieking. Dang it. And she hands over the hat, and you can see she starts reaching for the other one, but the other dude's already got both hands on top of his hat. Like, no. <laughs> no. All right. It's it's a pleasure to do in business with you, lady. I got you. If you wanna you wanna hit me up for another friendly game later, you hit you let me know. Uh, oh. And I place the other hat on Sebastian's head. Oh my god, I'm so happy. You can see above you is a bunch of birds that are circling overhead. Some of them land on the sails. You guys spend quite a lot of time on this boat. There's food brought out to you. Blueberry, there is something that is plant-based where you can at least get enough food, even though most of what they're eating is fish. There are some, like, potatoes and stuff, so you're, you're able to get sustenance. Don't worry. Okay. After about six more hours, you hear... Jatoba from the wheel. Ah, there he is. I haven't seen him in so long. Oh, are we are we almost there? Sebastian, ahead of you, you finally see land. A similar landscape as the one you just left presents itself. The coastline is filled with these large maple trees you're all too familiar with now. There is a large cliff where the land masses used to meet, and on top of it is a similarly large tree. This one donning yellow leaves. But as you move closer, more detail comes into view. The leaves of the crimson maples seem dull and faded, many falling onto the ground. The lower branches of Ecrosia have leaves falling off and are turning from the bright yellow you see at the upper branches to a dark brown color the closer you get to the ground. The lower areas of bark are faded and the roots seem to be rotting away, forming a black mass at the tree line. Blueberry, what what happened to the tree? I don't... No. Jatoba, do you know what what's going on? I feared something like this would be going on when I heard Yasora had not returned. This doesn't look like a normal seasonal thing. It is not. We must get you there quickly. Yeah. Let's hit it. Is it like a straight shot when we get onto the onto land? Yes, there is a pathway that leads right to an entrance. Do you think Yasora would be here, or do you think she got lost at sea? I mean, it seemed like a pretty smooth ride from what I could tell. From what Narina told me, she left in the morning, so she was not traveling at night, so she should have been fine on the sea. Right, I hope she's here. Yasora is a powerful druid. She didn't even need a boat. What? What? I mean, she can change herself. Oh, 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 like, like, like blueberry. blueberry, yeah. I feel like that's too advanced for me, like, swimming. Yeah, you gotta get used to, like, gills and stuff. That's weird. Yeah, I don't feel like I could do that. That's a hell of a trip, too. Like, you were only a- you were only a wolf for an hour-ish, I think. Time's weird. So, damn, Ysora must be strong. After another half hour or so, you are close enough to the coast, and Jatoba drops his anchor- Drop the anchor! Land ho! (laughs) Yes, Sebastian. (laughs) uh, Maybe it's it's not quite the time for that. Sorry, I just had to get that out there. Be back as soon as you can. We won't be able to sail tonight. I'm going to try to head up the coast a little bit and find a dock somewhere. Do you think we're going to be alright? I do not know. I hope for your safety. And you can see that he gestures you off to the side where there is a rowboat that they are dropping into the water for you to get to the shore. All right. Okay. I climb in. There's two sets of rows. All right. Who's rowing? Uh, Jet. Yeah. Jet. And I'll take the other set. Oh, yep. I'll grab one of them. 
Yeah, just give me uh, strength checks. I just want to see how oh, fast God. you're able to, to get you guys onto shore. This was a mistake. Which oh, way man. we circle in? <laughs> Yikes. I got an eight. I got a four. Oh Whoa, I'm stronger than Jim. Uh, hey. My strength checks have <laughs> been like nothing. They've all been bad. I yeah, know. What the hell? <laughs> It takes you quite a while to get to the point where the waves are actually pushing you inland. So this takes you a lot longer to the point where you're seeing like the boat start heading up the coast. It takes quite a while. You are able to arrive on shore, though it, you aren't quite on like a nice soft part. You get into kind of like a rocky area where the cliffs were. So you're like kind of off the beaten path right now. And there's a pathway that leads up towards Akrosha. Akrosha is just as big as Amorpha, but you can really see the rot that has been taking over the lower parts of the tree now that you're closer it seems more lively at the top where the the leaves are still a bright yellow and at like the tips of the branches but the path seems to lead directly to an entrance to the tree much like amorpha i'm assuming yasora went up to akrosha so i guess we check it out first yeah and see what's going on make sure that seed is still there can I do an investigation check to see if there's anything around here? Give me perception, unless you're trying to, like, look at specific things. Oh, we're, we're telling you right now I don't see shit with this four. <laughs> yeah, Xander, you are currently focused on trying to get out of this boat without face planting into the water. That sounds about right. So you guys are heading up to Ecrosia. Yes. Yeah, probably following the path and then just heading up to the tree. Uh, you can tell from the outside, Ecrosia is much the same layout as Amorpha. There is a single staircase that goes clockwise up the trunk. That's basically the only main difference. Amorpha's went counterclockwise. This one goes clockwise. Aww. The bottom of Ecrosia is untouched, however. There is no meeting area, no gardens, no storage. There's nothing man-made here except a pile of different pieces of broken wood off to one side. And you can see that there are a few root systems as well here that come off the main trunk. Jet, how high did you go up on these stairs? When I ran up and down, it seemed like there was multiple stops or balconies. I only made it to the first. Was it at least remotely close to the top of this? Because that's a lot of stairs. I don't want to give you any bad news today. Oh, God. Well, I I don't see Yasora here, and I don't know if there's anything else we can do except get climbing. Is there anything I can glean from what is going wrong with the tree now that I'm closer up? Give me a nature check. Oh, no. <laughs> Six. Oof. Our rolls tonight. This is not typical and there's no people around here no. besides us nope ah. was there any sort of any sort of town or anything that we could see walking up to it nope let's climb let's get to stepping as much as i hate to say that what order are you getting to step in should i lead the way like usual yeah but just watch your step okay don't worry i'm experienced at this uh i'll go last Okay, I'll go in front of Xander. Okay, I go second. Because I was going to choose last, but he beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to protect the caboose, my dude. It takes about 20 to 25 minutes up the stairs with minimal breaks. You're all breathing heavy, and you seem to come up to the first balcony along the staircase. Ugh. Chet, this is basically a mirror image of the one you had seen the day prior in Amorpha. When you get to the balcony, however, you can see a large area of rot that has made it this way through the bark and into Ecrosia. The wood is darkened along the wall. And you see some vines, as well as a large, almost human-sized purple mushroom fixated to the wall. It's roughly the shape of a teardrop, and there are these vines all around it climbing up the wall. Do I have any idea what that is? Give me investigation. Or nature. And, well, 
that's a one. Oh, natural no. one. But you know, with nature, it's a two. <laughs> oh, with the nature being a two, like it's definitely a mushroom. We didn't see any of this on the other tree. Why is this one so rotted over? Well, it's in a different place. Something must have attacked it or cursed it or I don't know. This is not normal. It, is there a smell or anything to it? Jet, give me a perception check as you do in your sniffs. Uh, 15. With a 15, it does smell like rot and it smells like decay. With that 15, however, Jet, as you are like looking onto this balcony and kind of giving a sniff, you can see that some of these vines are moving slightly and the mushroom seems to pulsate rhythmically. Oh, Blueberry, you're not making these move, are you? No. As I am kind of, in a way, like, investigating this, and I sense if this is something natural or if it's something possibly, like, evil-ish. Are you trying to use something? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just need a yes or a no that I need yeah. you to read me what it says. Because <laughs> I don't remember the exact wording. As an action, you can detect good and evil until the end of your next turn. You can sense anything affected by the, by the hallow spell or know the location of any celestial fiend undead within 60 feet. The, uh, that is not behind total cover. You can use this three times per long rest. It does not literally detect good and evil. Yes. I am going to say no, you don't detect any of that stuff. While Jet's investigating, Sebastian is going to remember the story. So I'm wondering, because I know Narina said that the magic healed Amorpha, but I wonder if Acrosia wasn't able to be healed because of the earthquake and now it's all the way over here. I wonder if that disease is still affecting him. I don't really know how to fix him, but I think that might just be the cause of all this decay. Uh, this might be a silly question, um, but but Blueberry, you know, like some like some plant stuff. Can you can you fix that? I mean, like if those Italians back there couldn't like what? fix the rot, like m- maybe not, but like Italians, you know, like the folks that we were just just chilling. They gave us like training. I don't know. Those folks. Those dudes. We're not in Italy. Well, they spoke something that I didn't recognize, and I've, I don't think I've ever heard Italian in person. Okay, you haven't been to the right restaurants. You don't get much Italian through L.A., I guess. Yeah, that feels like an East Coast thing. All them pizza places in New York City and stuff, like, that's where they would go, right? Sure. Uh, I mean, <sighs> I don't know what's going on, so... Should we just try to go see if that seed is still there, I guess? I'm going to stay really far away from this big old mushroom because I don't like the look of it. Yeah, it's probably not great to touch it. Is it blocking our path? So this balcony is 15 foot wide and 25 foot long. And then the stairs continue on the other side. And the fungus with the vines is just like along the wall. We should continue on. Yeah, let's just walk around. Yeah, that is the route i would like to take (laughs) jet you're going first Mm -hmm. as you're walking along this balcony kind of keeping your distance as far as you can you can see that one of these vines shoots out at you what's your armor class oh geez 18 it misses and then there is another group of vine who also shoots out at you and gets you with an 18 Is it a vine? It's like from the mushroom or from the tree? It looks like now that these masses of vines are different than the mushrooms. Oh Oh my god! Backing up. Jet, you good? Um, help? Eight bludgeoning damage. Oh, holy shit! And you are grappled. Uh, anyone? Oh no! Oh god! Xander, knives. (laughs) Roll initiative. What? Oh boy. (laughs) I got a 10. Also 10. Dirty 20. Eight. Blueberry and Xander, what are your dex mods? Two. Two. Roll up. <laughs> uh, I got a 14. 15. Oh. <laughs> How many health do you have, Jet? Sorry. 
How much health do you have? <laughs> How many healths? Can we know that? Or is that sacred information? It was almost half. We'll put it that way. Oof. Sebastian, it is your turn. I am just going to run up behind Jet, and I'm going to jump on his back thinking I'm pulling him off, but really I'm just going to cast Cure Wounds on him just to try to help him a little bit. <laughs> Jet, don't worry. I got you, buddy. Uh, six health. Ooh. And I am now on your back. <laughs> You're grappled twice. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that one of these vines whips out at you now, Sebastian. What's your armor class? Uh, 13. That's a 16. That is only four damage. Ow. I don't like this. Actually, you are also grappled. Oh, shit. <laughs> Blueberry, your turn. Oh, God. Okay. Um,. So I am going to grab onto the wall and wild shape into a fiendish giant spider, which is weirdly just a medium-sized beast. Oh, wow. Interesting. That sounds way worse than just giant spider. <laughs> yeah, but it's smaller. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to crawl along the wall towards the, the closest vine that is holding a friend. Which one is it holding? That one is holding Sebastian. Okay, and I'm going to bite onto it. Uh, I'm terrified, but please help me. Okay, give me an attack roll. 16. Definitely hits. Five piercing, and it has to make a con saving throw. Okay. <gasps> For what? I just got an 18 on the saving throw. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Oh, it takes half, though. Oh, dope. So seven halved, so three poison damage. <gasps> Is there anything else you want to do with your turn, Blueberry? That's it. Xander, you're still on these stairs behind Blueberry, but it's your turn. I feel like getting close would be a bad idea. You're still like 20 feet away from like where Blueberry is chomping. All right. Well, everything's a picture perfect moment, so I'm going to pull out the camera. No settings change, so I can do an Eldritch Blast at the vine that's holding... Which one did Blueberry attack? The one that's holding Sebastian. Okay, so I'm going to aim at the one holding Sebastian. My roll is 14. 14 hits. Hell yeah. Roll me some damage. Wow, that's 12 damage. What? Holy shit. <laughs> oh, because you took that new invocation. Hell yeah, brother. So it's it's a D10 plus three. Jesus. Damn. And you rolled a nine? Hell yeah, Xander. Oh my god. All right, we are to Jet. Jet, you are currently restrained by this one viney boy. So I, I can't do anything. Or sorry, you're grappled and restrained. So essentially you can't move. Okay. You can attempt to get out of the grapple with a strength check, but that would be your action for the turn. I would also let you attack with disadvantage on these vines. So seeing that Sebastian's trying to help me out and he's on my back... To try to help myself out and him, I'm going to try to swing my hammer at the vine that's holding onto him. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Where you guys are, that makes sense, and I will allow you to do that. You will still have to attack with disadvantage. Can I use my inspiration? To make it normal, yes. Okay, so I'm going to use that. 15. 15 hits. Woo, baby. This thing's holding on by a thread right now. Five. Five's enough. Oh, baby. Yeah, Jet. Able to snap this thing. Blueberry, in your mouth, the vine that was in there, you can feel it shrivel up a little bit and Ew. fall <laughs> to the ground. Jet, that's your turn? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Jet, as you turn around to swing at these vines hitting Sebastian, you can see that the purple fungus opens a little bit. Oh, yeah. no. Jet, it's going after you. Roll me a d4. Oh. Uh, that's a two. All right, it's going to take two rotting touch attacks on you. Oh, what? Ooh. Ow. No. It has its own purpley vines that look almost like spatulas at the end, and it comes and Ugh. just touches you. No, ew. That's a five to hit. That's going to miss. That's a 10 to hit. That's going to miss. <laughs> you're, you're too constricted by these vines where it's just it's trying to touch you, but it can't get in between your armor. Plus, the vines are all wrapped around. It can't quite get to you. So that is the fungus that is currently restraining you, Jet. Okay. Uh, it can't do anything this turn. Sebastian, your turn. Noise. 
So now that I am ungrappled, I'm going to jump off Jet's back. And since he saved me, I'm going to have just this hatred for this fungus because it just purpley attacked my boy. I am going to cast Dissonant Whispers on the fungus. <laughs> on the, the purple fungus? Yes. So you whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of your choice within range can hear, racking it with terrible pain. <laughs> the target must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, it takes 3d6 psychic damage and must immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far as its speed allows away from you. This creature doesn't move into obviously dangerous ground, such as fire or a pit. On a successful save, the target takes half as much damage and doesn't have to move away. A deafened creature automatically succeeds on the save. Would you consider the fungus a deafened creature? Can it hear right now? Yes. So this is not a deafened creature. Nice. So burning hatred in my eyes. Stare at this mushroom. Listen, we were already cramped up here, and there is just not much room for you here, too. Wow. No! <laughs> what kind of save do I have to do? A wisdom save. 13. Yeah, I got a force. So that's taking how much damage? 13 psychic damage to this mushroom. And all of us. The dissonant whisper is only one creature. But that pun, though, is all of us. <laughs> we all take one I'm damage. Very sorry. <laughs> Got him. Can I also take this opportunity? Can I move back down the stairs a little bit? You can. Cool. I would like to do so, please. You're able to just scoot past the giant spider. Uh, Jet, sorry. I'll, I'll be right back. I'm, I, I just got to get out of here real quick. And as you pass Blueberry, she's going to do something. Go ahead. <laughs> that was a terrible <laughs> transition. I tried. He's gonna do He's gonna something. Do a thing. Now do it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Blueberry. It's your turn. <laughs> do you want to do that again, or do you want to keep it? No, nope, just keep it. In. We're keeping it. <laughs> okay, that something is. She is going to bite the nearest vine. So right now, all the vines in front of you have all shriveled up and are not moving anymore. The fungus is in front of you about 10 feet, and then there's another group of vines on the other side of the fungus that is holding Jet. Okay. Um, would I have to move more than five feet away past the mushroom to get to those vines? I have a 40-foot climbing speed. Can I climb around? Oh, snap. Yes, you would easily be able to climb around. Okay. That made my life so much easier than trying to count. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll climb around and bite those vines. Yeah, you're able to climb up and around and get a chomp on the vines. Give me a tech roll. Oh, 13. 13 hits. <gasps> Yay! Okay, six piercing and a constitution saving throw. Con save is... This one's a 10. <gasps> no, it fails. So that's six poison damage. Dang. Xander, you're up. In front of you is Sebastian cowering away. There is some dead vines, the violet fungus, and then on the other side, there's some more vines. Okay, so I guess I'll I'll take a picture of the uh, of the mushroom, uh, aka another eldritch blast. Ooh, a ten. Ten hits. Oh, what? I guess a mushroom probably isn't going to be able to do much to dodge. That one's less impressive. That one is a five. Uh, that kills. Oh, oh yes. my gosh. Hey, nice. <laughs> Now, there's only the vines that Blueberry had just attacked. Jet, those are still grappling you, and it is your turn. So, I am going to try to break free. Okay, yeah, just give me a strength check. Uh, nine. Nine does not pass. Oof. Man, my mm. strength checks are garbage. Especially for a big burly boy. That is this vine's turn. It can't do anything this turn. Sebastian, your turn. <laughs> Okay, I am going to look at the vine. Uh, uh, listen here, vine. You're going to die as quickly as the app. And I'm going to cast <laughs> Vicious Mockery on it. Oh, yeah. that's just you know, that's just sad. I miss vine. What kind of saving throw? <laughs> Wisdom 13. Uh, I got a two. Nice. <laughs> One damage. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Disadvantage on the next attack roll. If it makes one. All right. Uh, blueberry, <laughs> your turn. <laughs> 
Okay, is there still vine left to bite? Yes. I will bite vine. A uh, natural one. <laughs> oh no! Oh, please don't bite Jet. <laughs> She's not near anyone for this. I'm gonna I'm gonna store that natural one. What? Uh, what? <laughs> store you can it. Do that. I can do that. I can. Wow. Xander, your turn. Uh, oh no. <laughs> So I'm just I'm gonna take out that short sword that I got out earlier because this thing's probably looking pretty pretty loosey goosey and I'm gonna try and just hack at it. All right, you're able to get up there. Take a smack. I got an 18. 18 hits. I got three damage. It's starting to look rough. Jet, your turn. Seeing this thing starting to hang by a thread, I'm going to with disadvantage try to attack it. All right. Six. Nope. It can't do anything, Sebastian. Oh no! Oh my gosh! I all right. I'm just gonna take out the crossbow and go for a hit. Okay, I got a nine, but I would also like to use my bardic inspiration that I got from Jody. How long does bardic inspiration last? Uh, not that long. <laughs> t- t- ten minutes. That was literally <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like Sandra said, time is weird. You know. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Well, it's a nine then. A nine doesn't hit. Dang it. Blueberry just going to chop this thing <laughs> to death, apparently. This vine is getting the best of us. Save us. I'm going to bite it. Go ahead. Ah, uh, eight. Wait, I want to use my inspiration. Okay. Oh, no. It's an eight. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Xander, please. You're, you're telling us. That this vine that is sitting there not moving, <laughs> nobody can hit. It has done nothing this entire time except just hold you. It's just like wiggling like here and there. Uh, okay, I'm going to try another Eldritch God. Blast because that sword was not good enough and everyone is failing right now. 16. Thank you. That hits. Okay, oh. that hits. All right, oh. come on, Xander. Okay. It's like one damn Big money, big money. 11. Yeah. 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 Xander, go ahead. All right, so with my final Eldritch Blast, I'm starting to finally understand the nuances of my camera in this world versus the other world. Because, you know, in the real world, like, I'm a nice photographer, but here it's kind of like everything's weird. So I'm just like, I got you, you son of a bitch. Yeah. And then I click the button and it explodes in Eldritch Blast goodness. I don't know. I don't know what an Eldritch Blast looks like. You get to decide, man. That's the glory of D&D. Oh. <laughs> Flavor your Eldritch Blast. My Eldritch Blast, it looks like the Gucci logo when it's burned, like if it was like insignia into the ground. So oh like if anyone looking, it would just be like a purple light blast. <laughs> but then wherever it hits, it just brands Gucci into it. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so wait, you you hit that one guy. You hit that one guy in the forehead. Does he have <laughs> Gucci branded oh, into his yeah. forehead? He's, he's just branded with Gucci forever. <laughs> oh my god, maybe they think he's like part of the the blood druids because he has this like satanic symbol on his head because they don't know what it is. Maybe we should make it so that it's uh on a killing blow if they get branded. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> get fucked mine said twitter <laughs> ahead of you is stairs going upward you start to look up and look down and it looks like you're probably a third of the way up this massive tree Jet, you didn't have to deal with this in your tree did you this sucked nothing near this oh can I tell as a spider how injured everyone is without asking? <laughs> you have eight eyes. You can see everything. Can I tell if anyone's really uh, hurting? I'm a little roughed up, <laughs> but I'm standing and okay. Okay. I'm going to go over to Sebastian because when he got attacked while he was on my back, I want to go and make sure that he's okay and just kind of check him all over. Accidentally, quote unquote, <laughs> do uh, lay on hands. <laughs> how much you giving him though? Uh, five. Uh, Chad, I think I got like a little thorn in in my elbow. Can you get it out? Please? In your elbow? Yeah. All right, can come you here, get it out? Let me, let out, me look at it easy, uh, easy. Hold, hold, hold your arm out. Stop! I don't want to bend it. And I'm gonna pluck one tiny <laughs> little thorn out really quick. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Oh God. And for today, that's a wrap.
Hey. Ah. All right, all right, all right. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Want to learn more about every single episode of Cast Party and receive a bunch of awesome exclusive content, perks, rewards, and discounts? Join us over on our Patreon at patreon.com slash castparty to get access to Behind the Scenes on Monday, December 14th, where we talk all about what happened this episode, some derailed nonsense like always, and also figure out what Hogwarts houses all of us and our characters would be in. Being a Cast Party patron grants tons of other amazing perks like access to our community Discord, a live listening party with all of us on the release day of each new Cast Party episode, a live listening party with all of us on the release day of each new Cast Party episode, and entry into our merch giveaway. Speaking of, this episode's merch giveaway winner is Nick Vega. We'll be reaching out to send you some free, awesome Cast Party merch. You guys want to snag some for yourself? You can check out our merch over at cast-party.myshopify.com. So what are you waiting for? Snag some merch that would even make Xander jealous and be sure to hop on over to patreon.com slash castparty and become an official part of the cast and crew. Links to everything will be down in the description below. Thank you all so, so much for listening and we can't wait for you to join us in two weeks for the next episode of Cast Party. Bye. 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 Sebastian! Sebastian! Why didn't you add in the oh gosh, oh no song to the soundtrack for the movie like I asked you to? Uh, well, uh, listen, I-, I wasn't sure if the director would like me messing around with the soundtrack without his permission, so like, I mean, I don't, I don't oh, know. No, 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 listen, listen, the director will understand. Just find a spot for it somewhere in the movie, okay? I told Becca I'd help her band get some traction, and they deserve the exposure. Man, Blueberry, I, I wish you pushed my band that hard, I mean... I can go get you an album out of my car, like, if, if you want. I, I, I don't need another one of your albums, Sebastian. I, I I already passed it along to HMC 31400, and they'd let me know if they liked it or not. They just signed with the legendary E-Build Kitty Rainstar, so I'm not even sure if they're looking for new artists right now. Okay, okay, don't don't get me wrong. I, I appreciate you passing it along. Sebastian's Blueberry. You've seen Kitty Girl around here. We got a perpetrator on the loose. She ran through her security without swiping her card. Oh my. Oh, I see, I see her. There she is. Kitty Curl, you come back here. Okay, well, that was weird. I just saw her scan through security with Maldol37. They were bringing in the cake together with Rainbow Pug Love for a proud Huff Puff's birthday. Yeah, uh, I think Big G's starting to lose it a little bit. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if. That's why they hired Zapier at and I, I think it's about time Big G retires. Ugh, you're telling me I asked H-D-U-E-I-E-K-F-I-D to come by the studio the other day to hang out in between takes, and Big G chased them off thinking they were sneaking in from the press. Ugh. some derailed nonsense like always and also figure out what hogwarts houses all of us and our characters would be in hogwarts houses hogwarts houses hog (laughs) fuck hogwarts houses all of us would be in hogwarts houses all of us and our characters would be in